Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning to all of the participants of IAIS Islamic Science Talk Series on Malaysia's readiness in adopting artificial intelligence and analysis from the Islamic perspective. Uh, this talk series is one of the initiatives from IAIS Science, Technology, Environment and Ethics Unit to gather the experts in the respective field to discuss and provide solution on the current pressing issue related to the impact of technological advances from Islamic perspective. Alhamdulillah, uh, thank you for all of you for being with us since before this talk series started at 10 a.m. together uh, with us here in this morning, uh, our respective panelists, expert in cybersecurity and artificial intelligence to start our talk series in this morning. Please let me briefly share what our discussion is all about. Uh, for introduction, the COVID-19 crisis has taught global business leaders several important lessons about mass digital transformation. In this regard, data analytics, artificial intelligence are two critical areas that can assist businesses in streamlining their business uh, processes, developing new business model and developing new product and services. AI has the potential to significantly reduce the time required to complete complex tasks due to its continuous 24-7 continuous operation at a little additional cost. It can also help uh, to reduce human error, perform predictive maintenance, and improve decision making. As a result, almost all companies and enterprises have expressed desire to adopt AI as a mainstream technology as soon as possible. However, uh, question remain about whether Malaysia's businesses are ready to adopt AI based on their current knowledge, talent, facility, and cost. There is also the question of what values it can bring to society and whether any value will be added or not. To find the answer of, uh, to this question, IAIS Malaysia is bringing two experts in their respective field, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Fazan bin Nordin from Kuliah of Information and Communication Technology, International Islamic University Malaysia, IIUM, a recipient of the 2021 CyberSafe Professional of the Year from Malaysia Cyber Security Award, and Associate Professor uh, T.S. Dr. Khairul Rijal bin Jamaluddin from Razak Faculty of Technology and Informatics. Both experts will present their respect, uh, perspective and finding at our, uh, at our seminar, Malaysia Readiness to Adopt uh, Artificial Intelligence and Analysis from an Islamic Perspective. For your information, our first panelist is uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Fawzan Nordin. He received his uh, PhD from the University of Wales, UK in 1997, MBA from Central Missouri State University, USA in 1991, uh, BSc in Computer Science from uh, University of Missouri, Kansas City, USA in 1989. He is a professor in knowledge technology at the College of Information and Communication Technology. His book, ICT and Islam, has been adopted as the textbook at several universities. Within just over a decade, his career has spun for uh, has spun far and wide. Currently, he is the head of ICT and Islam Research Cluster. He was the Dean Center for Graduate Studies, International Islamic University Malaysia, uh, 2012 to 2013, a visiting scholar at the University of Bahrain and Jazan University. United, uh, from uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Besides this achievement, he has been appointed as a member of research panel for the research grant scheme at the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation since 2005, and a panel member for National Da'wah Policy of Malaysia, and senior fellow at the International Institute of Islamic Thought. Previously, uh, he was the Dean of his uh, of the Corporate Strategy and Quality Assurance, Director of the Center for Collaborative Technology, IIUM Director for uh, Information Technology Division, Director 
Center for IT Environment and Director Center for Excellence in Continuing Education, E-Learning, CXL. He was the uh, co-chairman for my uh, IS, uh, or Malaysia Association Information System uh, and currently the Deputy President uh, of the institution. He uh, specializes in uh, knowledge technology management, information system, MIS, ICT, and Islam, social networking, cloud computing, e-banking, knowledge management, and wisdom uh, in ICT. In terms of publishing, he has contributed articles in various local and international journals. He has recently been pioneered as uh, the winner of CyberSafe Professional of the Year in the Cyber Security Malaysia Award conference and exhibition 2021. Without further ado, I would like to invite our first expert to deliver his talk. Uh, please, Professor uh, Dr. Fazan, uh, the mic is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Summa alhamdulillah. <coughs> All praise to Allah SWT. Sal Salawat and salam to our Prophet Muhammad SAW. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shahino, uh, Mah Abdullah, uh, moderator, my colleagues, panel, uh, Associate Professor Tan uh, TS, uh, Dr. Khairul Rijal. <coughs> and thank you very much, IAIS, for giving me the opportunity to share the ideas and the, the thought for this morning. <coughs> so the title for this, uh, my talk for the, 30 minutes is artificial intelligence from Islamic perspective. Okay, I will start with uh, Surah uh, Al Imran, uh, Ayat 190. This is uh, the, 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 the highlight keyword here I want to emphasize is understanding. The Ulil Albab. Who is Ulil Albab? Some people translate it as a researcher, or some uh, sectors uh, translate it as scientists. And uh, the most important thing is understanding here, the word understanding is connect to the artificial intelligence. Allah asks us to have understanding. Understanding about what? About the creation of heaven and earth. And a connection. Uh, of night and day, and it is signed ayatullah. It's ayat, huh? so this is the evidence. Ayat is mean evidence. Then Allah continue with 191. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alladina subhanaka fakina adabana. The keyword I want to emphasize here. Think deeply. Waya tafakkaru. Kalau kita bahasa Melayu in our Malay, we say tafakkur. Actually, tafakkur is, um, sometimes people say, oh, tafakkur is a, um, uh, it's like uh, someone passed away, it's tafakkur. No, it's, it's think deeply. Think deeply. And this is the another character of artificial intelligence. Think deeply. But before that, Allah SWT, Remind us, Allah, those who remember Allah always in the prayers, in uh, standing, sitting while we are sitting now, but sometimes we are standing, uh, sometimes we are lying down, meaning that all position 24 times 7. 24 times 7, meaning that not, uh, not, not even uh, a second we forget Allah SWT. 24 times 7. And we, and we have to think deeply about what? About the creation. About the creation of heaven and the earth. And finally we say, Rabbana ma kolatahaza batilan. Our Lord, you have not created all this without purpose, with makasit, with the objective. And then subhanaka fakina adabana. And end the day, I want to emphasize here the objective of all this research, science, and technology actually is fakina adabana. Huh? Glory to you and uh, uh, Give a salvation from the torment of the fire. This is the key word. Huh? So I want to start here. The science technology is to ask us to think, uh, to, to understand. And finally, what is bring us 
is to uh, to 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 beg doa that Allah Subhanahu taala save us from the torment of the fire this is the final objective i move on then there are many in if we study quran and there are a lot of uh, verses ayat that ask us to think afala tatafakkarun don't you think afala taqilun don't you use your wits your akal huh? then then wa fi anfusikum afala tubshirun don't you see so all this is a thing using your wits don't you see is a ai character ai uh, senses so for me ai is nothing wrong or against islam actually islam ask us to uh, do what artificial intelligence do and this is another surah tamtaqilun uh, uh, again surah baqarah verses 242 explain the la'allakum uh, taqilun understand them then kuntum uh, taqilun Uh, understand it so arimran uh, verses 18 and here is connect with the hearts uh, uh, the mouth uh, all these are senses uh, heart nose ears uh, is is senses so artificial intelligence cannot run away from those senses sophia have the ears eyes uh, mouth to speak uh, and it, it connect uh. then um, another surah al hadid la'allakum taqilun here allah tell us about the the death of the earth but allah give us the life uh, brother iman just not uh, before the talk uh, he he asked about the life of senses then we have explained to you the signs us uh, that uh, you think about it al hadid the al hadid uh, uh, is, is to do with surah of ayan And, and and this kind of material so this is a uh, we as a muslim we should explore more in our quran and then then uh, uh, these are several uh, verses that list down that connect to artificial intelligence akal be mentioned 49 times afala taqilun as about the mind you use akal 24 times they yaqilun do they use their intellect 22 times afala ta'lamun don't you know the the the, the root word his ilm huh? no knowledge uh, 36 time afala ya'lamun do they not know 91 times uh, this is uh, then afala tatafakkarun don't you think three times afala yatafakkaru do do they think 91 times afala tadrusun did you not learn so learning thinking knowing intellect it is integrated and all of these are artificial intelligence and they are artificial everybody say it's artificial but we human being are real and original and uh, uh, i still believe we are human being that allah subhanahu taala create the best creation ahsan taqwi and we and artificial intelligence will never uh, beat at, uh, uh, the, the creation of allah subhanahu taala this the understanding the, the the second that understanding that i want all of us and uh, 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 focus on okay i quote this part na say pan says former prime ministers of indonesia in fact is the first prime minister of indonesia now indonesia don't have prime minister they have president he said long time ago around 60s 70s he said in 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 the process of developing indonesia we cannot ruin or we cannot uh, destroy the indonesian people dalam membina indonesia jangan kita meruntuh manusia in other words in, we develop the countries we cannot uh, ruin or destroy the human being and now recently christian harris said in his social dilemma he was a former google's engineer he said while we upgrading the machines we have been downgrading our humanity this is the concern ethical thing that we should worry and uh uh where uh all these things then <clears throat> professor uh, this uh, novel uh ts elliot said uh, way back 1988 1965 he said where is knowledge we have lost information where is wisdom we lost in knowledge so i'm worried that we so much on artificial intelligence we lost our wisdom 
Okay, then uh, this book, I uh, think you can download free for research and uh, learning process is published by Triple IT. Uh, I'm also a director of uh, Triple IT for East Southeast Asia. This book, you can uh, post Muslim societies in post normal time, discuss about artificial intelligence and social media and a lot of topics. And by Professor Ziadun Sada, Jody Sierra, and Scott Jordan, they said the event of social media has connected East and West, North and South, and open exchange information and communication through Facebook and so on. It can bring people together, but also divide and fragment uh, them simultaneously. AI begin as automation process, readily seen in industrial retail, but now can grow to be integral part of many production process, banking, advanced medicine, and we worried so much about war. This is, uh, they worried about this. And in the book also, they quote the Stephen Hawking said, declared the humanity was entering an increasing dangerous period of our history. He was concerned about possible perilous outcome or he said, Stephen said, super smart artificial intelligence. Super smart artificial intelligence. And by the way, Stephen Hawking is the atheist. He do not believe in God, but he's so worried. He said, therefore, essential for us as individual communities and nations to develop a sense of direction and awareness of where we are heading, alertness to the potential consequences of our current activities and choices, and understanding of the global cost of our individual and collection decision. I want to congratulate IARS, bring uh, the forum, because we have to start somewhere. We have to discuss. We have to know where is sense of direction. Where are we going? Where are we? Where is our benchmark? Then issues of social justice, income disparity, unemployment environment, technological and cultural disruption are perhaps more acute and urgent in Muslim world than elsewhere. And, and these are top drivers of adopt AI. One of uh, the, the famous one, 31% said better customer engagement, still the lower part is uh, just customer service. High competitiveness, yes, it's good, 31%. And uh, business leaders leader also say accelerated innovation, improved efficiency 12%, and productivity employees 8%. This by Microsoft IDC. And according to the country's business leader, AI will allow the rate of innovation to almost double uh, 1.8 to increase employee productivity improvement by 60% in Malaysia. Then this uh, top, top AI adoption challenge in Malaysia, Microsoft and IDC said, 28% lack of thought leadership and leadership commitment to invest in AI. This is the keyword. And this study is parallel with what been the survey been done by Professor Rose Alinda, a leader of a UTM survey and, and submitted as a roadmap, Malaysia roadmap of artificial intelligence. I will, I will share a little, little bit. <clears throat> then 80% said lack of skill resources, continuous learning program. And 17% said lack advanced analytic adequate infrastructure tools to develop actionable insight. So we are in uh, 2022, two years after 2020. What's wrong with us? We, we know later on what's wrong with us. Then uh, AI will outman not displace job. Here he said, uh, uh, people worry about artificial intelligence will replace the uh, our human being. Not, not really. Actually, they are helping us employees do their existing job better. 30% and 40% said by the uh, workers. <clears throat> Reduce repetitive routine tasks, employee job, uh, like uh, uh, three are dangerous, dirty, 3D. Dangerous, dirty, and another one difficult. Okay, this is the finding by uh, Malaysian Artificial, Artificial Intelligence Roadmap by, led by Pro Rus Alinda, been submitted to the cabinet almost second. And uh, general findings highlight adoption is of AI, artificial intelligence, is a global phenomena. Malaysia is no exception. You, whether you like it or not, AI is going to stay. Organizations are still behind in AI technology application. Uh, more than 50% uh, say that. Yeah, organizations are more uh, are still behind. Top AI application are related with analytical and biometric application. This is the finding we're going to show later. The most common AI capabilities used is intelligent process automation to support business operation. This is uh, another finding. Another finding: substantial difference between government, private, and private organization exists. There are gap between private and differences, and the gap between multinational companies and the local companies. 
organization have low overall budget priority for AI, not just uh, organization, but uh, maybe government. So this uh, current budget in this year have to look at AI if we think seriously. Budget allocation on AI related projects are mostly less than 5%. This is the, the, fund, uh, the survey, the, the result. Top challenges to AI, artificial intelligence adoption, a lack of talents, expertise, and funding. This is the summary of the highlights of this uh, general finding. The detail is the, the <clears throat> policies, AI governance, policy and regulation task force committee support system, risk management ethical framework, is the only uh, 50 less than 50 percent, yeah, 50 53 percent, but they are initial 26 percent, partial 15 percent, full only 12 percent, and and some people say only 47 percent, none, none, we don't have it. But uh, who knows that we have it, but initial more than quarters it initially. Then talent headcount and projection, hiring channel resources activity, they promote. Challenge uh, is shortest AI talent in the market, 72%. 72% also insufficient budget to hire AI. So why is we don't have enough AI? No budget. So 72, 72. And uh, unsuitable AI talent in the market for my organization, 68% say that. And 65% say unsure which categorization AI to recruit. So maybe awareness, discussion, and more learning. These are like learning curve. 58% issues with current HR, human uh, resource recruiting process. This is uh, about AI, talent, and people. Then number two, infrastructure and data that support AI. Data sharing, uh, activity storage, capabilities, policies, mechanism, infrastructure network, computer resources, security. By the way, the one of the studies knowledge sharing, we in Malaysia are very difficult to share. Uh, even recipe masak pun kita kedekut nak, mas uh, nak share. Uh, silat all those martial arts when you know uh, they are one uh, they get a uh, buah eh? or step they are we are not sharing with the, our our students uh, so here the study about ai back to ai state of ai infrastructure data uh like uh, none is 31 percent then full 16 percent partial everything is like initial stage you move on number four is uh, uh what is the category of technology research and development innovation. <clears throat> Number one is big data analytics. We are so much talk about big data analytics. We're so much talk about smart application. We so much talk about uh, internet of things. 82% on big BDA, big data analytics, 61% on smart application. Internet of thing is a uh, 60%. But less about neuromorphic computing. Less about reinforcement learning, less about robotics. Less about algorithm. Algorithm is important. And algorithm, <clears throat> hopefully everybody knows, is the key, the root word is from algorithm. It's a Muslim scientist. Algorithm from algorithm. And uh, he, he wrote the book about Al-Jabir, now become Algebra. By the way, you saw Al-Kindi, the one who come up with encryption and decryption. And from encryption, decryption is, is, uh, is now become the Bitcoin and blockchain. And who found it? You saw Al-Kindi. Okay, this is about digital. I want to skip this because this is, uh, you can get it from Hood Suite, but I want to say that 50%, 57% is in the urban. Then, okay, this is thing. What's wrong, what goes wrong with Malaysia? We are number six, by the way, in the world that spend more time in, on internet. We are spent nine hours, 10 minutes. Is there spend eight, nine hours, 10 minutes on AI? No. They spend more time on WhatsApp. They spend more, it's 93%. Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, all is social media. Those are not quality time. There's no r and I mean, research, science and technology. So this is the one that I want people alert. The third thing that I want people aware that we should migrate hijrah uh, from all these social media, TikTok cultures, all this, uh, of course, it, Sometimes it's very important to, to share it information, but but please not 93%. And you see the, the developed countries. You see developed countries, Japan only uh uh I thought you were from your country, four percent. Denmark is five uh, five hours, no, four hours, five hours, Netherlands, six hours, even China, only six hours, 15 minutes, Germany, five hours, 
this uh, China is one of uh, yeah five hours fifty minutes. Switzerland five hours. The six hours is a uh, Spain. Below that is Belgium. All developed countries spend less hours, but all developing countries South Africa, Philippines, Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, and Malaysia number six. Okay, I now concentrate the uh, the first surah that revealed to Allah SWT, to Rasulullah SAW, is about read. Read mean to know. This is artificial intelligence uh, character. Ikra a'uz billahi minash shaitan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalqal insana min alaq. Ikra wa rabbukal akram alladhi alam bil qalam alam al insana ma lam ya'lam. So now what we use of this pen? To write, to store and share knowledge. What is the the thing that write, store and share knowledge? It can be a smartphone, can be this uh, uh, notebook. But most important thing is artificial intelligence. And who taught us how to use this pen? It's Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah di alam bil qalam, alam al insan alam ya alam. After we Allah taught us how to use this pen, qalam, we know what we did not we did not know it before. Now we use uh, AI. Uh, 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 then we know what is the uh, 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 new knowledge. Okay, this is the first surah, uh, the whole surah. But here AI that uh, Shahino mentioned about the ethics, the artificial intelligence, the technology is not run away from the ethics about taqwa, righteousness, and and Allah uh, uh, described uh, one of the major ethical uh, uh, problem is lying. Here Allah has described that who are liar will be punished by dragging him or by fall off. And finally Allah asks us to get closer to Allah SWT. So this surah not just about read, about technology, but about and so connect and relate with ethic and akhlaq. And this also surah Al-Qalam verses 1 to 4, Allah uh, thought about known, wal qalami wa ma yasturun known by the pen what is the inscribed and inscribed is the character of artificial intelligence, but it connect with uh, you are the wa inna ka la ala kulukin azim, and indeed you are the great moral character. It connect with the akla. Okay. By the way, the their hadis sahih Hassan Sahih Ghari, uh, saying that the first creation that been created by Allah SWT is al qalam. Inna awal ma qalak Allah al qalam, faqala lahu uktu ya Rob ama uktu qala uktu al qadar. See, the first revelation ayat that revealed to Rasulullah Sallam talk about ikra, read. And the, the, the diminution is al-qalam. The first creation that Allah created is al-qalam. But the verb action that Allah asked qalam to do is to write. Read and write. Is the, 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 the technology is al-qalam. And read and write now is the basic and here that I emphasize about, we always talk about hardware and software. The people where that, that develop hardware and come up with this, uh, write a programming with software AI, but the one who control people where is the hardware. Our Kalbun Salim, Prisian Hati, yang mengawal manusia itu adalah Kalbun Salim, Prisian Hati, hardware. That will control people where, and the people were the one that develop hardware and the software. This is in my book, the ICT Islam. And Adis Rasulullah Sallam said, if this part of the body is good, kulu jasada hasana. If this one sayyat and the whole uh, body is sayyat bad, and that part is a uh, heart. And this I explained about that in IT or computer, we process data, data have information, data that has been processed become information, information has value become knowledge. The highest knowledge is wisdom. In between knowledge and uh, wisdom and knowledge is intelligence. Now we're talking about this area, artificial intelligence, but still artificial. But the highest is wisdom. And, and, and Thompson said, when you have wisdom, you have compassion. I add here, if you have wisdom, you have compassion and merciful. Who is the most merciful and most compassionate? It's Allah SWT. Actually, we are in journey to, meet, to get closer to Allah SWT. When you go lower and lower, you're far away from Allah SWT, you are less compassion, less merciful. That's why sometimes we can see the auto bot, uh, the, 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 the killer that uh, uh, by the robot, uh, the, the, uh, the, the kill because without a son. And sometimes human beings worse than that too. And we have to move from ICT to knowledge technology to wisdom technology. 
And this my the framework, the AI model according to Islamic perspective. In the middle is the hardware, but the highest is Akura and Sunnah. So and then, the, and of course we have hardware and software, we have peopleware. To do with data information is the only hardware and software, but to do with peopleware and hardware is knowledge and wisdom that we can use other concepts like modern society by Al-Farabi or Makasit Sharia by Asha TV or Imam Ghazali. And this is, uh, we have to use Makasit Sharia, whether this is Dururiyat, Hajiyat, and Tasiniyat. And we have to know whether this as artificial intelligence that we can have should protect a din, protect nafs, life. So is AI uh, kill peop other people? We have to stop it. Protection intellect. If AI install our intellect and ruin our intellect, so it's not according to Makasya Sharia. It's for our AI is a protection of lineage, marwah, dignity. Is Sophia is we create the machines that for the as a sex toy. So we have to stop it. Protection wealth is a lot. If uh, social media we come up with more so a uh, scam that people losing money through the online banking. So we have to stop. So we have to put the rules and regulation mechanism to, to, to not to stop in a way, but to control it and to manage it. I have three slides more, uh, Shahina. So uh, Shahino, uh, these are Farabi concepts. If we use AI, we should promote the truth. If we use AI, we should promote love or knowledge. If we promote AI, we should promote happiness, not sadness. Even the Google want to, uh, they come up with the like button. They want to create happiness, but people uh, get less like button as their, as their expectation. They're not happy. And finally, in Varavi, in his uh, Danish society said, we want to create the promote good deeds. So we have promote good deeds in artificial intelligence, not bad deeds. Finally, this, uh, the verses in Suratul Namal, uh, verses ayat 39 and 40, where Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam asked his uh, subject, who can bring the throne of Balkis? Then the jinn said, I full of strength and trusted, I can bring this uh, uh, throne of Balkis before you rise, before you stand up. But another person, Al-Ladi in verses 40, Al-Qal Al-Ladi indahu ilman min al-kitab, Allah did not mention the names, but this uh, person is uh, uh, Al-Ladi ilman min al-kitab, bring this uh, throne of Bakis in the uh, blink of the eyes, which one is faster. But finally, uh, Prophet Sulaiman said, Hadha min fadli rabbi, di is uh, uh, by the grace of my Lord, Allah SWT, to test me. Uh, to test me. Liyab luwani ashkuru ma akfuru. Whether I'm grateful or ungrateful. Shukur or kufur. So for me, AI, IR 4.0, big data analytic, machine learning, all this is technology to, to test us whether we are grateful or ungrateful. Finally, we should shukur, grateful to Allah Taala. Not our fame, famous or Commercial is nothing wrong about commercial, but it's commercial is not the ultimate objective of Makasi. And for me, we move from data workers, data society, data communication to information communication to information workers, information management, information society. Now we're in the era knowledge economy, knowledge society, knowledge communication, knowledge management. And finally, we should arrive in wisdom communication, wisdom workers, wisdom economy, wisdom society, wisdom management. Wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah wa salamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Muhammad Fauzan Nardin, for enlightening um, presentation of your work. It is interesting to know that AI could increase productivity by 60% in Malaysia. However, there are challenges that need to be addressed as mentioned by Professor Dr. Fauzan, such as uh, organization are still behind in AI technology application, more than 50%, low budget for overall priority for AI, like of talent ex uh, and expertise and funding. And one of the most interesting term that Prof. Uh, Dr. Fauzan introduced here in his presentation is uh, hardware or prescient hati, not only software and hardware. I think we should put more focus and include uh, this hardware in developing uh, ethical AI. 
So uh, we have received several questions of, uh, from the participants uh, and keep collecting them towards uh, the end of this talk series. Uh, all of the questions will be answered after our second expert de deliver his talk on artificial intelligence readiness in Malaysia. So for, uh, for uh, the next session, our second panelist is uh, Associate Professor T.S. Dr. Khairul Rijal Jamaluddin. He has a PhD in Manufacturing Engineering from University of Kebangsa Malaysia, UKM, a master degree from the University of Warwick, United Kingdom, and bachelor degree from U University of Technology of Malaysia, UTM. After graduation with a bachelor of mechanical engineering, he worked uh, with Proton, a national car maker in Malaysia, a place where he gained his industrial engineering experiences. In Proton, he in charge of the engine and transmission department. And in his uh, department, he was responsible for the plant capacity upgrading and setting up a new production line for new mo engine models. He has been appointed as the academic member of staff in UTM since 1997. He is uh, passionate about material processing, product quality, and quality engineering. He has published many research articles in international journals in the field of quality engineering using the Taguchi method or optimizing metal injection molding processes. He and his team uh, are actively uh, involved in industry research as well as fundamental research, particularly related to the Taguchi method and Mahalanobis Taguchi system with the concern and encouragement given by the family of the late Dr. Jenichi Taguchi. He and his team have uh, founded a Jenichi Taguchi Center for Quality and Sustainability in UTM. In 2019, he was invited by uh, CIRIM as an expert panel to prepare a guideline for the readiness assessment level of organization that are providing manufacturing uh, related services MRS to adopt industry 4.0 in 2021. Uh, he was appointed by Malaysia Productivity Corporation as an auditor for Malaysia Industry 4.0 readiness, readiness assessment program. Without further ado, I would like to invite our second expert to deliver his talk. Uh, please, uh, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Karu Rijal, uh, the mic uh, is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shahino Mahabdullah, our moderator for today's session. Uh, Professor Dr. Fauzan, the previous speaker, that shared very thoughtful uh, knowledge with us. And Mr. Amir, Mr. Iman, IERS, thank you for inviting me uh, in this session. This is just some introduction. I think it has, has been covered by Professor Fauzan about the artificial intelligence. Basically, what we can say is uh, AI has the potential to empower human through enhanced learning and performance. Uh, we, we can use AI in many applications, but uh, in my context, I focus on the industry. Although uh, my students also do uh, integration of uh, algorithm with the Mahalobis Takuchi system for prediction. And I have one of my friends who use uh, artificial intelligence for earthquake prediction in Japan. And he managed to leave uh, Hokkaido uh, before the earthquake happened. And when he texted me, he told me that uh, he know the earthquake will happen uh, on that particular date. So he, he went out from uh, Hokkaido. Uh, he is a Japanese and received grants from the Japanese government for a speed prediction. So uh, what I would like to highlight here, next slide please, uh, about uh, how AI can benefit the Muslim economy. That is my purpose. Uh, next slide please. Uh, I want to skip all this uh, definition about uh, AI. So uh, back please, oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, what I want to emphasize here is about how AI can boost and help to improve the Muslim economy uh, from the industry perspective. Because as assessor, industry assessor, I discovered this is a lacking about our Muslim community. But if we in implement 
or we ready ourselves towards industry 4.0, which AI is one of the component. Probably we can eliminate the non-value added in industry. Cost is very important right now. Not just today, before also. Cost is very important. To get the price of the product, we have to calculate how much is our cost and how much is our profit. Cost is not to be calculated from the engineer's perspective. Cost is to be reduced. So if Muslim industry can reduce cost, which we are living with the 90% of non-value added from the cost, 90%. In Japanese, we call it muda, muri and mura. So if we can eliminate those 3M waste, the non-value added, so we can convert that to the value added, probably we can make more profit. Not just make more profit, probably we can increase our uh, competitiveness by reducing our price. That is the strategy that I would like to highlight in this, uh, in this session. Next slide, please. So uh, as we see here, AI, artificial intelligence on the, left, on the right hand side is the enabling technology for 4.0. So, so I would like to highlight, instead of highlighting about AI, which has been covered by Professor Fauzan, I would like to highlight in a bigger picture from the industry perspective about uh, our readiness, Malaysian industry, especially SME, towards their readiness on the adopting industry 4.0. Uh, at the bottom of my slide, uh, Fourth Industrial Revolution Maturity, 2035. Now, 2022, we have 13 years more to make our industry ready for 4.0. That is our challenge. Okay, are we ready? This is challenges faced by Malaysia. As mentioned by Dr. Uh, Professor Fauza, lack of awareness, especially the SME, not just SME, even MNC, one of my clients, I, I, I couldn't mention the, the industry, uh, one of my clients, multinational company in Malaysia, they also behind the 4.0. They start at level in between 2 and 3.0, surprisingly, multinational company. So how about our SME? Poor. Lack of easy access to vital data. Data is very important for 4.0, for AI. Uh, one company in, uh, in uh, Sha'alam, Hexa Food, I, I can share the name of the company. They are very good in terms of implementing this 4.0, uh, Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence and so on. Uh, particularly for the quality control of the product because they are producing spice. So the raw material quality is very important to control the humidity of their spices uh, to choose which good chili and a uh, bad chili for their production. So they have to teach uh, from the company representative, they, they told me that uh, they have to teach the machine like they are teaching a baby to recognize which one is bad chili, which one is good chili. So data is very important. However, uh, most of other industry, particularly the SME, they're poor with data. Many company probably they rich with data, data in a manual, manual form, but what I mentioned, uh, poor with data in SME is the poor in terms of digital data. They're full of manual data written in, on the paper, check sheet or whatever, they kept in the file room, uh, sorry, in, in the file. But data is still there. So they are poor, they're full of data, but they're poor with information. They couldn't convert the data into information. Knowledge, that is a very low level of the, uh, what we've been shown by uh, Professor Fauzan just now. And that is a problem in our industry. And they have shortage of necessary skills, talent, and knowledge. Hexa Food, when they want to start their factory to become intelligent factory after being assessed by the radio, uh, 4.0 readiness assessor, they start to hire mechatronic graduate. 
they took all the they hire all the young generation to help them to uh, improve the readiness 4.0 of their of their factory. Basically, we have graduate, we have talent uh, produced by our uh, skill institution as well as university in Malaysia, but the number of them still not enough. And higher adop uh, adoption cost, money is so important because SME, their language only money. They, they have very limited constraint about converting uh, their uh, their capital into profit and lack of proper understanding about the benefit and cost. They don't know what is the benefit of proposal, what is the benefit of AI, especially Muslim entrepreneurs, especially Muslim entrepreneurs. Now Muslim entrepreneurs, they have very good awareness. In fact, today and yesterday, I audited one company in uh, uh, U5, uh, Sha'alam. They, they know what is AI, they know what is 4.0, Internet of Things and so on. Because they are not non-Muslim. Non they have their community are talking about this because now we have problem with labors. Uh, to get labor is very expensive. And minimum wage also, uh, that's the dilemma, particularly for the uh, industry. And next slide, please. Another one is a unique customer demand expectation. In Asia, if you remember, they started the online ticket uh, ticketing since 1990s. Since then, they collected all the data. Now they already have the data, and then they converted their pilot and crew to become data scientists. And they managed to do the prediction, uh, classification of their customers, and then they know what is the expectation and demand of the customer. And one of my uh, elements that I assess industry is about customization. How the industry ready for their customer to customize their product? Uh, how about their product development? Whether they know to, they, they able to predict when their uh, brand or their model or their product start to mature in the market. So they should, introduce new product, new innovation before their product mature in the market. And they should know when they can make, make sure they, they got the ROI, return of investment, when the, at the, at the very steep S curve, they have, to, they, they have to know that. So how to help them to be able to do all this prediction, definitely artificial intelligence, big data analytics. So if they, Lack of data, so how could they do that? It means lack of uh, digital data. But the dilemma for SME is a cyber threat and attack. They worry about that because they don't have enough expertise. Many of the SMEs, they, they don't have really dedicated, dedicated IT person. Maybe the engineer also, the IT manager, he also the engineer, he also developed product, he also the uh, probably their HR manager. So one person that covers everything. So this is the limitation in SME especially. Fewer visible success story. Case studies. Uh, the company that I audited yesterday, he mentioned this because we, we don't have case study, uh, the best practice, uh, who success uh, implement 4.0 in, in Malaysia and limited coordination towards a common goal. Training is also important. So they need training. Uh, MPC provide the training. And some of the organizations also provide training under HRDF, but they still in need of that. Lack of appropriate collaboration with the research institute. This is opportunity for universities, especially uh, research institute to help our SME uh, to embark with the 4.0. Next slide, please. And as initiative, in order to have our industry ready for 4.0, government has introduced Malaysia Industry 4.0 policy. The short form is industry forward. 
and Malaysian SME are encouraged to sign up for this program. Next slide, please. Why SME? Because they are very important. They contribute close to 40% to our overall gross domestic product. So they are important economic sector. And they provide jobs. Close to 50% of the total employment comes from SME. They export, contribute to export as well, 18%. The company that I audited now, yesterday and today, 80% of their product are for export market. They produce uh, agriculture machineries. And, the very, and then they design by their own product and they export to abroad. They design and fabricate. Uh, they also produce design and, and produce farm for the uh, European market as well. Farm, some single farm, agriculture, uh, missionaries, and so on. Okay, next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, in this context, I would like to highlight our readiness assessment is divided into two, manufacturing and manufacturing related services. Next slide, please. This is the front page of the guideline. This is for manuf uh, manufacturing sector. Next slide. Uh, and then we have for manufacturing related services. Uh, for the manufacturing related services is about the company that serve the manufacturing industry. What they serve for manufacturing industry, for example, for the back office services, establishment of the manufacturing process, uh, maybe MRO, uh, maybe repair for the manufacturing equipment. But what important is the customer must be manufacturing. But is the, if the customer are not manufacturing, they are not entitled. They, they are probably entitled for the readiness assessment but they are not in, entitled for the intervention fund provided by MITA. So that's the, 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 the limitation for MRS. Next slide, please. And this is actually the uh, framework that we are assessing under four point industry forward readiness assessment. We have three shift factor, which is process, people, and technology. This is for manufacturing. Uh, eight class and 21 dimension. We have a rubric for that, and then we will uh, assess each of the dimension and we will put band. And finally, uh, for each uh, shift factor, people, uh, process, and technology, we will uh, give the recommendation to the industry. Basically, if you look at to the technology, we have three, three main trusts for the technology, a set, uh, automation, intelligence, and asset connectivity process. We have three main trusts, uh, operation management, product management, supply chain. Uh, for people, we have two uh, main trusts, which is uh, transformative leadership, uh, transformative initiative, uh, and uh, uh, human capital development. Next slide, please. And to differentiate on the framework for MRS and manufacturing, uh, this is the framework for both a sector, MRS and manufacturing. On the left-hand side is the MRS. On the right-hand side is the manufacturing. Okay, next slide, please. This is the current status. What I want to highlight and probably it complement with Professor Fauzan uh, talk uh, just now. More SME, they are aware about 4.0. And the survey shows that there's an increase of the awareness from 19.5% to 23.6%. Uh, Although it is still low, but they don't have data for 2020 because of pandemic. And the implementation of 4.0 can be seen as essential business tool. This is a great amount SME. They know that, particularly during COVID, they, they start to realize that this is the time for them to invest for artificial intelligence for IoT and so forth because we have less labor. Malaysia don't want to work as labor. 
because most of our people they have brain even a school level they have brain then they know how to connect sensor with the uh, controller if we train them because they have brain they have capability but their capability is not to do the manual work at the production floor manual routine work as high as 70.3.8 percent expected increase in productivity and efficiency 56 percent believe that i 4.0 will help them to have better planning controlling their manufacturing and logistic next slide despite greater potential to increase their efficiency and productivity lesser number of SME about 56.9 percent are ready for the implementation that is the lemma for SME. A cost always menghantui mereka. And this is the challenges for them to implement 4.0. Insufficient knowledge, 68.2%. High investment cost. So government should provide uh, funding. For example, intervention funding is about 500K to help them to uh, get the ball rolling in the industry. 47.8%. Lack of funding support from government, 40.9%. Lack of standard regulation and certification, 28.3%. Unresolved data concerning data security, 21%. Unclear economic benefit. So they don't know what is the benefit to them, 23.6%. Unclear legal situation, 25.5%. These are the dilemma by SME about implementation of 4.0. Next slide, please. So what is the readiness assessment? It's just assess assessing the industry about their current level, because in the recommendation, we, we will propose how could they get the ball rolling for, 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 for implementing the 4.0. So how to increase their bank? That's the purpose of the assessment. Next slide, please. Uh, we will re give recommendation and improvement, and they will use the report to get funding from the government, for example, intervention fund by provided by Maida. Next slide, please. Uh, because of the constraint in terms of timing, I would like to skip this slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, the predictive and prescriptive, that's the aim for uh, improve the industry capability. Uh, next slide, please. Next, next. I want to jump to the uh, funding. Next slide. Next, next, okay. This is the financial support given by the government. Uh, basically, com company has to bond about uh, 30% uh, in the beginning. Then they can claim after they finish the uh, improvement of their machineries or their operation. Uh, and then the limit for the grant is uh, 500,000 ringgit provided by MIDA. Next, okay, next. Okay, this is a process flow. Next, it is available in the website. This is the condition also available in the website. Next, okay, this is the status from the 410 application received by Maida and in process 59 application approved, they only approved 206 application rejected. 21 KIVs, 8 and wisdom 7. They, they have already dispersed 30% of their money to 164 companies. And seven companies has already completed and then they managed to get the full claim, 500K. Next slide. And this is the manufacturing by sector. Food manufacturing is the highest uh, get the grant approval. Next, in Slango is the as a bigger amount for the grant approved. What happened to Pahang and Perlis? Tenganu also Sabah. Okay, next slide. So as conclusion, our industry, especially SME, the lack of awareness about the needs for 4.0 technology. So this reduces the chances for exploring opportunities and the disruption of the business model. Next slide. For future, 
we need to help the SME to upskill and reskill all the existing talent, significant evolution in collaboration platform, innovation capabilities to develop and have access to be more efficient, inclusion of SME to encourage better involvement for enhancing productivity, focus funding strategy and support is required for faster and more efficient industry 4.0 adoption, and powerful digital infrastructure is needed to secure for, for IR operation thus increase reliability and safety. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Kairu Rijal, for your interesting uh, presentation on lecture readiness in adopting artificial intelligence. I think there are a number of challenges that must be addressed in order to for companies as uh, an SME uh, ready to adopt AI, as mentioned by Professor Dr. Kairu Rijal, such as lack of awareness like of uh, access to vital data and a shortage, uh, so, so, uh, shortage of necessary skill, talent, knowledge up to 68.2%, uh, higher adoption costs or longer payback period, lack of proper understanding of the benefit and cost, unique customer demand, cyber threat and attack, limited use of adoption and low digital transformation, uh, fewer visible success story uh, from local companies, limited coordination toward a common goal, proper training program uh, to upgrade skill and talent, and finally lack of appropriate uh, collaboration with uh, research institute, uh, industry leader, and university. Uh, all of this uh, should be addressed in order for companies as SME to fully ready uh, adopting AI in their business. This is according to uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Kairu Rijal from his finding. So uh, thank you to all of the participants for staying with us until both of our experts complete uh, their presentation. Uh, now we are open for questions from the participant. I think uh, we have several questions here. Um, if I can read, uh, the first question is uh, from uh, Brother Iman. Um, he asked, uh, scientists in the circular West are now talking about AI as uh, the next step in human evolution. Homo sapiens through the use of replacing organs, cybernetic genes uh, manipulation, computerized brain emulation, and combination of all with the help of super AI uh, will try will uh, try very hard to attain uh, immortality. Homo sapiens will turn into Homo deus. God human, according to uh, Iman. Uh, as a Muslim, uh, what is your take on this, Prof? Yeah, as um, you always know, that Allah SWT mentioned that in the Quran, we are the best creation, Ahsan Taqim. At the same time, Allah did not stop us to be innovation and, 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 and come out. And, and we have to understand that Allah SWT have 99 names. And we can have some of those character in the makhluk level. Yani when Allah says he has, uh, he has Rahman, we are Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman, but we have characteristic of merciful and compassionate Rahim. When Allah says he's uh, the, the, the one who, who create, so we can create, but in the level of makhluk. Uh, uh, like... Um, Certain organ is very important for in the medical uh, area. For me, it's no harm as long as follow the ethical values, and uh, as harm and we, and we we know that is a level of maklo. We can achieve whatever technology we have. Like for example, I give the technologies of this teleporting in Suratul Nahmal verses thirty nine and forty in uh, during the Prophet Sulaiman time to to uh, the Prophet Sulaiman during his time. The one uh, alim can brought Balkis throne from Yemen to Batu Mukaddis. And, and Ifrit, why I explain a little bit why Ifrit uh, been named as uh, uh, is uh, in the gene, Ifrit Tulmina gene, because the Ifrit have DNA of able to do it because he's a gene. If it told me jin, this why verses 39, if it told me jin. But verses 40, Allah did not mention the name. 
Does it mean that Allah did not know his name? No, Allah knows his name. But for me, the way I understand when I read Quran, Allah want to keep it open. Meaning that the human being like us can do that. As long as Allahi ilman min al-kitab. And that time, the human beings already beat the jinn. Yani ifrit, in term of technology. And we know the Prophet Sulaiman is the king of the king. The king of animals. He communicate with the animals, the language, and he can hear the answer. Said. So are you saying, are we, are we saying that the Quran is not fact? So we believe in the Quran. And what has been done and been explained in the Surah Nama is the advanced technology. And we can do that. And I believe we can do that. But as long as we are still, whether we are shukur or kufur. So this is the guideline that Allah SWT gives us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, uh, Prof. Ozan. Um, uh, is there anything you want to add, uh, uh, Prof. Dr. Karudi Jeff? Um, so uh, I think, uh, no, basically, but uh, I would like to highlight is AI is not to replace human. So yeah. we have nothing to worry about that because AI has no wisdom. It depends on the data that we input. So uh, if berapa banyak data, how much data are being input input into the system into the controller, I don't think they can have wisdom like human. Uh, I, I'm talking about the manufacturing perspective, not under robot or Sophia robot or whatever. Uh, what we need from from AI is to help us on predictive and prescription only. Especially in the industry, uh, in the manufacturing industry, or perhaps in the marketing uh, product development, we need AI to help us to tell us when the maturity of our product, what is the next customer preference, for example. That's what we, we want to know. So, uh, to answer that question, uh, I have nothing to worry about uh, AI to replace human in the future. Okay. That's my uh, personal opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want uh, to add on this uh, when uh, Dr. Cairo said about the wisdom. Because the AI can come to the level of knowledge and intelligence, but not, not wisdom, because wisdom needs divine guidance. Uh, if send off, uh, define wisdom, you need experience. But I define uh, wisdom, experience plus divine guidance. What is divine guidance? Is hidayah from Allah SWT. And, and wisdom is hikmah. In Arabic or Malay, it called hikmah. Uh, and to get uh, to have hikmah, you have you need hidayah from Allah SWT. Knowledge alone is not enough. So uh, AI, robotic, can have knowledge, but not wisdom. Okay, thank you, uh, Prof. Fazan uh, and uh, Prof. Kairudijal. Okay, we have a second question here. Uh, from uh, Izati Farhana. Okay, Assalamualaikum. I would like uh, to ask a question regarding the challenges faced by our country, particularly about shortage of talents and skillful workers in the field of AI. As we know, our higher education institute have offered courses specializing in AI and big data analytics, but still a number of graduates do not pursue a career relating to these fields. Would you agree that this is because there is still not many career opportunities for this fresh graduate to pursue career related to AI? Or if this is because the skill set of our local graduates do not match with the requirement of the industry? So what is your opinion for okay, this? First, then... Okay, please, please, Prof. Um, Prof or myself? Hello, you go, go okay, ahead. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, let me answer the question. Um, let I explain from the perspective of academia and industry because I quite close with the industry uh, pertaining to the four point zero. Uh, in in terms of getting graduates who are able to have industry, particularly SME, not just do the algorithm for prediction and prescription and 
probably they use the data that they got from the data pool available. But industry need someone uh, graduates from computer science or whatever who really good in the artificial intelligence who can also do the internet of thing, connect sensor to the controller and how to connect camera to the controller how to do the wiring, the practical side. Because SME, they cannot hire uh, different people for doing the hardware and different people to do the software. That's the, the concern. So for the university, uh, in terms of uh, producing graduate in the computer science, they should train, produce the graduate who can do the hardware side as well, not just the software. In my faculty, we also have the Master of Science in Business, BIE Business Intelligent Analytics. We also have Master of Science in Cybersecurity. Uh, one program on the artificial intelligence. I can't remember the exact name for that program, for master level. And mostly our graduate, they are hot selling kit. And we have, in terms of talking about the uh, hardware about uh, presenting the artificial intelligence, uh, IoT things to the equipment. We have UniKL and uh, GMR, German Malaysia Institute. Uh, their graduates are sell, sell like hot cake. Uh, uh, they are small, small of kerja, but, and, Sebenarnya industri susah nak dapat lagi graduate on uh, big data dan sebagainya sebenarnya. Uh, yang tak bekerja tu, those are, who are not employed, maybe they have limitation in terms of the uh, practical skill set needed to do the hardware job. Uh, data acquisition, how to get capture data from the machinery, how to uh, do the improvement of the current machinery because this is what industry needs. And they have machine that they bought 30 years ago, but now during AI, they want to equip that with the IoT. Yesterday, I found one uh, CNC machine. Uh, they asked me how to uh, get the machine communicate with the robot. Robot is a brand new robot, but new machine is the old machine. How to transfer data from the uh, computer to the machine using uh, Wi-Fi, but the machine is old machine. So that kind of knowledge, that kind of skill that, that is needed in the uh, manufacturing uh, industry, especially SME. Uh, that, so that's to answer your question. I hope I can, I, I managed to answer the question. <clears throat> yes, thank you, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Heru Dijal. Uh, do you want to add anything, uh, yeah. Prof. Pauze? Yes, uh, when we say the set skills, uh, one of my research is to study the demand and supply of IT set skills that uh, in the universities and also the industries. And they are mismatch. What the <clears throat> industry want and what we're producing is sometimes is uh, need tuning and alignment. And even the AI, the study by done by Prof. Rosa Alinda, is still, uh, she showed that we have a need to align certain set skill focus on AI. So all the sectors like the, the research by UTM done by quadruple, I mean four sectors, you, uh, government, I said government, then private sector, academia and industries <clears throat> have to work together. And, and, and one of the major concern is uh, beside the mismatch, universities demand and supply is uh, the work in silo. <clears throat> We should work to get uh, it integrated with manners, such way uh, uh, the industries know what is academic doing, and academic know what industry need. The government come up with the policies and also the um, private sectors. So all these have to play their role. And most important thing, some of the issues that we consider is no budget. What's wrong with the budget? Budget is there, but sometimes the, the, the process from one agency to another agency, they are uh, loophole, ketirisan, bukan ketirisan, kepocoran. 
sometimes corruptions. So all these things we have to, to, to improve uh, in order for future generation, for our young generation. So there, there are commitment from all sector, name it academia, name it industries, then organization, NGOs, uh, NGOs also involved. It doesn't mean that you are NGOs, you have nothing to do with AI. No, NGO have to involve in AI. And most importantly is the government. Government have to take a lead, play a leader role. Uh, it's not cut and paste. Whatever other people say, you cut and then you paste it in your speech. No, it doesn't work at all. We have R&D, please. We want to help the academic. So we want to work sincerely. No, uh, what do you call it? Uh, for sake of the future generation. Thank you very much. Uh, can I add uh, some more, uh, Dr. Shaino? Okay, please, please. Okay, uh, talking about uh, synergy between ministry, I also facing one problem. Uh, not myself, actually. Uh, we as uh, RE, readiness assessor for 4.0, there are several uh, paidy, uh, manufacturing company that we have uh, assessed for, 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 for 4.0. And the problem was, after they got a report, they want to apply for the funding, intervention fund from MAIDA. They are not entitled for that fund. Why? Because they are under mafia. Ministry of Agriculture, can, can, you, can, you, can you relate with what uh, Prof said just now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The synergy between ministry. Yeah. That's a problem. Okay. But at the top is the Prime Minister. Yeah. So that's the role of the Prime Minister to moderate this. Or probably when the restructuring of the new government, probably. For example, academic, university, we are higher education. In Thailand, for example, higher education is together with science, uh, innovation, Ministry. Uh, in Asia, in Asia too. Yeah, yeah. They, are, they, are, they are together under one minister. For example, uh, paddy producer, paddy manufacturing. Of course, they are manufacturing industry. But since they are under mafia, they are not entitled anything under uh, MIDA. That's a problem for the funding. But mafia also have the different emphasis. They are not emphasized on the uh, 4.0 to improve the capability of the uh, party processing in terms of manufacturing. For example, on a dryer, uh, how to make the, the, the conventional dryer to become more intelligent. So that's uh, my input for that. Okay, I want to add, since this is like a discussion, very good life discussion. Uh, as you mentioned, Tibet, I mean, uh, sometimes we are so much like recently, some comments that we are the factory of A's, many A's. But are those A's going to this science and technology? Are those A's, uh, where it goes? How about TVET? And, and TVET is very important in Germans and other European countries. They emphasize, and even Japanese, Dr. Cairo know better than me, they, they emphasize on set skills that sometimes is uh, uh, not so much on memorization, more on skills. More so, Yeah, yeah, you mentioned it. Then, then the, the thing is, uh, uh, Dr. Kairuja, I think you know, you're aware about this. When they want to discuss about TVET, there are like several more than three, four, five ministries discuss on TVET. <laughs> there is a minister of higher education, minister of education, then uh, there is a science and technology, there is EHR. Everybody have their own portal and everybody want to protect their own territory. Little Napoleon. That's why I emphasize in the last comment. We have to work for future generation, not for us. Sometimes we pick it, what for us? What we get, it's wrong. It's our future generation. Please, please wake up. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof uh, Fauzan and Prof Kairu Rijal. So I think for this question, it is clear that uh, we need a more practical skill, not only AI, but also um, uh, how to connect sensor to IoT, do more communication and many more. Uh, and Prof Fauzan uh, added that we have a mismatch of set skill that we learn in the university and what uh, industry uh, need. Uh, and it need uh, alignment according to uh, Prof Fazan said. So we have uh, one uh, question, a simple question from Hamad Hafiz. Uh, Prof, 
how can academics contribute to uh, uh, how uh, to AI acceleration in our country? So, Prof. Uh, Prof. Hosan and Prof. Kairudijan. We may start first. Uh, first, uh, R and D, because uh, as academician, what we learn in 1990s now is become obsolete. Even our students uh, that start a first year studying, when they uh, in the year final year final year for year, is the what they learn in the first year is already obsolete. So we have to update and upgrade our skills and technology. Then uh, of course we in UNUSI you know, will never catch up. We never uh, we teach them today and we'll apply it tomorrow. Because we teach today, tomorrow is become obsolete. So what we should do, uh, we should uh, uh, teach them how to learn, how to pick up new skills and knowledge. Communication skill, inter-interpersonal skills. Sometimes they are good knowledge, but how to communicate, to express what they know, they not they have the intelligence, but they, they fail in communication. So this is very important. So we just not, shouldn't teach our students the knowledge, but how to learn, how to innovate, how to communicate, how to lead leadership, how to work in teamwork, because out there you don't, you cannot work alone. Uh, I'm from IT background. Some of our IT background, they are so-called, they, they, they like to work with the machine because they said the machine is a more, uh, predictable, no emotional. We can work uh, 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 exactly what they want, but human is unpredictable, emotional. So this is, after all, we have to live in the real world. It's not virtual world. Even though more of the time, like nine hours more than we spend in the uh, virtual world, but uh, we live in the real world. So bring back them to the real world, and we work together, research and development, and we have to integrate and do not ignore the universities and academicians. Sometimes the policies makers out there thought they are uh, not, not just uh, uh, policy maker, even academician thought, think. So there's all, some sectors think that they are super being, yet no better than others. No, we are complement each other. We don't, we have to integrate, work together and uh, communicate and update and be humble. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Fawzan. Uh, Prof. Dr. Khairul uh, anything you want to add? Uh, thank you, Dr. Shano. Uh, about uh, academia, university, and industry, we have to synergize. We have to work together. So academia has to go to industry, involve with the industry, not industry dog. Ask them what they want, how I can help them, how we can help them. So ask them, because they're quite afraid and talk about professor to go to university to, to get assistance from the professor. They're afraid. They have a kind of inferiority complex, especially the SME, uh, Muslim SME particularly. So we have to approach them and work together, synergize with them. And pertaining to the student, uh, we have to teach graduate who can think, who can think about new knowledge. Uh, anything that we will learn from in a university, probably obsolete. First year, next year, second year, the, the knowledge that we have learned in the first year already obsolete. The technology is keep moving. So student graduate has to be more creative, be more communicable. Ask question if they are in doubt. Read more technology science fiction books rather than uh, reading gossip in the social media. That's my advice for uh, young generation, for students. Thank you very much. I want to add, uh, Dr. Shahino, that even IUM, uh, we have this uh, under Center for IT Advancement. We prob uh, we, I also taught a subject, uh, Master Business Intelligence Analytic, uh, where one of the core subject, Islamic worldview, ICT and society. Uh, so besides uh, data analytics, uh, sentiment analysis, we also teach the subject. Another uh, master's is master in protective security management. So we teach the IT security officers how to deal with this. So actually uh, courses and uh, 
knowledge is there for you to 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 study and and we are going to face this uh, inflation uh, so best time is to study to studies and to studies and to studies as uh, dr kairo said we have to work together industries academia ngos and most importantly is the government Thank you, uh, Professor Dr. Fauzan and Professor Dr. Karoleja for the answer. I think for this question, uh, the need for R&D, more funding, and then synergizing uh, between uh, university and industry uh, must be made. So um, I think uh, we have one more, I think, last question uh, from Zain. Uh, uh, according to him, uh, students and youth are the backbone of the country's future industry. Okay, especially IPTs who are looking to move into various industries in this country. Um, what are their preparation, whether they are in the field of AI or not? And how can they get ready for the next real or virtual world? So um, maybe Prof. Fauzan or uh, Dr. Uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Karu Rijal uh, can answer this. Uh, Karu Rijal first. Uh, I think Prof. Fauzan is more appropriate because he is the IT expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first, uh, when I, I think two months ago, when I, we reviewed for Ministry of Education, the curriculum for high school, I am glad and find out that uh, we are studying even Hadoop, the AI, the sentiment analysis, all this uh, Python, all this in our high school students. And uh, in Penang, uh, I come across one student doing online. Uh, I thought Malaysia is doing better, but I see online uh, these students are like uh, standard four or three years old, I think like uh, 10 years old. Uh, I said, what are you doing? Actually, he's uh, going to prepare a class that is assessed online from India. And I see the algorithm, the, the, the programming part is, is like high school student, like our sekolah menengah. I said, wow, we thought uh, Hadoop and uh, Python is already is good enough for our high school students. But now in India, they're studying in our primary school. So whatever, uh, that's why we, I said, wake up. We have to do it better. And inshallah, we can do it better. And, and, and we have to prepare for this. And, and um, more R&D, more budget for education, more budget for the... Uh, research and development, more budget for AI. We're talking about AI, like you see, less than 5%. So this, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, the cabinet is going to come up with the budget. We want to see how, where is the budget for ICT, especially the AI. Uh, so this uh, thing that we should focus and, and um, we should uh, focus for sake of future generation and we have uh, big hope. Uh, for our future nation, and I believe they can do it. And uh, we know that two schools, uh, I think one in Klang, that we know one, the, one the, among the best schools in the world. One in, uh, so there are two schools. So we can do it. And one of the factors I read in the New Straits Time, the factor is not memorization, but how to think and to create and to learn by yourself independent. But now we are teaching our students and our people spoon feeding culture. This the knowledge take it. Take it or leave it. No, we want them to think. Teach them how to fish, not give them fish. And, and don't forget the hardware element, present hati kalbun salim, because this is the one that control the people, manusia itu sendiri, and then this uh, people will control the hardware and software. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Um, thank you, uh, Prof. Hazan. Is there anything you want to add, uh, Prof. Dr. Hairu Rija? Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Shahino. Uh, the key point here is to teach our young generation from the early age about how to think. I would like to take, give one example, how uh, primary school embedded this uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, IOT, from the early age. I take example, Sekolah Rendah al Amin. Huh? They have robotic club from standard one until standard six. And then they teach the student, the young kids, how to, until doing the programming. Even in the Facebook, if you notice, uh, there are several classes organized uh, for kids, uh, how to write simple programming. So this is a very good initiative, I think. Uh, 
probably if there are parents here, uh, so we should uh, allow our kids to take part because when we nurture this from the beginning, from the early age, inshallah, when they are at the secondary school and the university level, they are already ready with this kind of thing. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, okay thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, um, I think for, for this uh, question, uh, we have to teach our next generation from early age about AI, programming, IoT, and other mainstream technology so that they will not left behind and prepare themselves for, for AI in the future. So I think this will be uh, the last uh, uh, question and uh, we already reached uh, 11 30 a.m. So um, I would like uh, to thank our expert, our panelists for sharing a lot of information and details on Malaysia readiness in adopting artificial intelligence. Um, so we are now clear that Malaysia need more talent, funding and good infrastructure to be fully ready to adopt AI in businesses, SME companies and any organization. So uh, we hope that all of uh, our participants enjoy and find our talk uh, series useful and beneficial for you. Inshallah, we will be organizing the next Islamic uh, science talk series in the near future, and we will let you know later. Okay, thank you very much, and see you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.